Welcome back, everybody, to the Westlake Hornets team. Builder Dynasty here in NCAA Football 14. As today, the number one ranked 2-0 Westlake Hornets return home as they face off against the 0-1 Cincinnati Bearcats. Last week, Westlake was on the road against the Michigan State Spartans, in which the Hornets ended up getting the win 24-21. I know that is a very close score, but I think Westlake played better than the score suggests, and I think it was a good win for the Hornets. Michigan State is a very tough and resilient and gritty football team. They really fought in this one until the end, and sometimes you got to win the ugly ones, and that's what Westlake did. Through two weeks, the defense has not been great, but that's to be expected. With seven new starters on that side of the ball, you expect to see growing pains, and that's, well, unsurprisingly what we've seen. The offenses looked very good. Now, last week, it was not as good as it was in the first game of the year against Utah State, but the offense seems in sync right now. Steven Westwood has gotten off to a very hot start to the season. Westwood did miss most of the second half last week with an injury. He is back and healthy today, which is good, but hopefully Steven Westwood can play a little bit better today against the Bearcats. Welcome, everybody, to the Hornets' Nest here in Burmester, Utah, as the number one ranked 2-0 Westlake Hornets take on the Cincinnati Bearcats for the third straight week Westlake will start on offense that's pretty crazy because normally they start on defense in all three games they start on offense before we kick this one off I would like to recognize the Westlake Hornets who were just drafted into the NFL last night in the Jags franchise NFL draft video Westlake had I think 15 or 16 players drafted including seven in round one Linebacker Lewis Kahn was the first overall pick. He went to the Giants. The other top 10 selection was safety Marcus Jones. He is now in Carolina. The Jets drafted three Westlake players in Brandon Flores and John Paul Patterson in the first round, and then Kyle Harris in round three. And our Jacksonville Jaguars drafted two Hornets in wide receiver Zeke Bowman and kicker Volker Gantz. Let's get to the game and watch today's Hornets now. Westlake opens up with the ball here, second and five. Westwood going to look to throw it, and it's a deep ball for his younger brother, Carter Westwood, who gets pounded on the play, but does gain 20. Good play for the Hornets. A few plays later here, Stephen Westwood going to look to throw it again, this time getting it to Tegan Moon for a nice gain. It's been a slow start for both Tegan Moon, the wide receiver, and his twin brother, Tristan Moon, the corner. Hopefully both of them can play a little bit better today. First down now, Westwood gets it to Dale McBride, and the passing attack looks really good so far here on this first drive as Westlake should be able to punch it in. First in goal from the two, Westlake has Stephen Westwood joined by running back Irving Porter in the backfield. Porter will get the handoff and will find the end zone for a Westlake touchdown, and the Hornets will strike first here in this one as the redshirt sophomore running back will make it 7 to nothing. The Bearcats now have it on offense, and this group can score some points. It's not going to be an easy one today for this Westlake defense. Is on second and seven. The quarterback, Wyatt, is going to be pummeled to the ground for a loss by the linebacker, David Harris, his first career sack. Obviously, David Harris is a new starter on this team, filling in for the recently graduated Justin McGee, who was a second rounder last night by the Las Vegas Raiders. Third and 15 now, Wyatt's pass is intercepted by the senior corner, Anthony Mitchell. Mitchell's had a rough start to this season. Last year, he led the team in interceptions. This year, he's dropped at least like four picks, but that one he gets, it barely looks like he got a foot in bounds, but after taking a closer look at it, he definitely was in bounds. And Westlake has the ball as Stephen Westwood's gonna keep it on the run. Spin move and the ball is loose, and it is picked up by Cincinnati. So after Westlake's defense forces a turnover, the offense has it for one play, and they give the ball right back. Not how you really want to capitalize off of the turnover, and now Cincinnati has a chance to rebound. First down, here's Wyatt, going to take a shot, and it's picked off again! Anthony Mitchell with his second of the quarter! That's how you start a football game, to say the least, defensively, as Mitchell with two interceptions within the span of around maybe two minutes. That's pretty hard to do, as Mitchell made a really nice play on both of those passes. He was able to go in front of the receiver, played the ball really well both times, and now Westlake's offense has it back. This game's already had three turnovers. 
Here's a handoff for John Cummings. He's gotten off to a slow start this season. Cummings has a few blocks down the field. No one's going to catch him, and that'll be a Westlake touchdown. A beautiful run by Richard Jr. John Cummings, who, after his drop last year in the national championship, that would have won them the game. Westlake fans don't really like John Cummings, and he hasn't given them a reason to like him this year, but hey, there's a good run at least. Bearcats trying to move the ball down the field. There's a nice pass by Wyatt for a solid gain. Obviously, Cincinnati's offense has not started the way they have hoped for with a pair of interceptions. Here's Lee Malone now, the talented running back. Gets by Harris down the sideline and is pushed out of bounds by Tristan Moon inside the 20. A huge run for Malone. And the Bearcats are inching closer to the end zone. Back to Malone. He absolutely annihilates Kevin Blanchard. And that'll be a touchdown. Blanchard had an outstanding game last week, but does not start today off particularly well. And Lee Malone humiliates him on that play to add some salt to a wound. And it is now 14-7. Still in the first quarter as Westwood. Going to scramble to his right. Finds a wide open Carter Westwood. The Cincinnati defenders did a very nice job of socially distancing on that play as Westwood gets a huge gain in the air. It's been a fairly slow start for Carter Westwood. I mean, he hasn't played bad, but he hasn't played up to expectations yet this season. First down, Westwood now scrambling to his left, and he loses 11 on the sack. Huge play by the Bearcats, and now 4th and 14 from around the 29. This is a 46-yard field goal for the freshman kicker, Zebediah Phoenix, the second, and he drills it. Phoenix has not missed a kick yet. He has looked very good to start his Westlake career, and the Hornets now lead it 17-7. Cincinnati's offense has it back, third and five. Wyatt under pressure from Washington, and will sail it out for Kirk. Bad coverage by Anthony Mitchell. That's a nice gain for the Bearcats as they get a first down. Outside of the two drives with Anthony Mitchell interceptions, the Bearcats' offense is moving the ball down the field fairly nicely. Third and eight, Wyatt connects with a wide open receiver. I don't know who Tristan Moon was covering because he was definitely not covering that player. Now third and 11, the Bearcats have already converted twice on third down this drive. Let's see if they can get a third as the tight end is in motion. Wyatt looking to throw it under a little bit of pressure and again they convert as Pittman with the first down before being wrapped up by the junior linebacker, Dylan Washington. It's another third down, this time third and goal. Bearcats are three for three on third down, so let's see if they can make it four for four as Wyatt's pass is broken up. Right in the hands of Paul King, he probably should have caught that, and Cincinnati will now get the field goal. This is no harder than an extra point as the kicker drills it, and Cincinnati is now only down 17 to 10. Hornets offense has it back. Cash is Troy in motion. Troy has been the best receiver on this team so far this year as he gets the handoff. Troy down the sidelines. He looks like he has nothing but green grass ahead of him. A very long touchdown run for Cash is Troy. And Westlake will extend their lead. Back-to-back -back drives with huge rushing touchdowns. Westlake has had at least four or five rushing touchdowns of longer than 50 yards this season. The amount of big plays on the ground has been insane as the Hornets get an interception. Tristan Moon with the play, and that'll bring Westlake inside the Cincinnati 25. Tristan Moon and Anthony Mitchell have both been disappointing so far this season, but today they've each made multiple big turnovers, and now Westlake has a chance to make it a three-score game before halftime. The rushing offense is all three touchdowns for what it's worth, as despite playing really well so far, Stephen Westwood has not scored today. He gets it to the redshirt freshman, Maurice Rogers, who brings it to around the five. Rogers has really impressed me so far. In limited snaps, he has looked quite good for this offense. Second and goal out the five. Stephen Westwood looking for his brother, Carter Westwood, in the back of the end zone. That's a touchdown, and the Hornets will extend their lead. Carter Westwood has definitely played his best game of the season today, and it is now 31-10 as this offense looks like they are on fire right now. Cincinnati with it back. Wyatt has been intercepted three times here in the first half. Is on third and eight. Good pressure by Paul King, and he is forced to throw it away. So Westlake will get it back here late in the first half. 
Keith Fleming is in the game, by the way. Westwood is not hurt or anything, but it looks like this will be a design run for Fleming. As he gets for first down and more, tackle it out of bounds for a good gain of around 17. Steven Westwood back in the game here is on first down. He's going to scramble with it. On the run, risky throw, and it is caught by Carter Westwood at around the 20. That was a ballsy pass by Steven Westwood, but he does get it. Now we have the cursed option pitch, and the Bearcats not only will force a turnover, but they're going to get a scoop and score. Westwood tried to toss it for John Cummings. I think it deflected off the defender. The ball then went backwards, and Mark Jones was able to get to it before Cummings could, and it is now 31-17. Very high-scoring first half so far. Westlake going to try to add to that scoring, as here is Tegan Moon with a nice gain. A few plays later, the Hornets now have it at the 25. They are in field goal range, but I don't think they want to settle for just a field goal. Steven Westwood looking for Carter Westwood, and he will be tackled at around the five-yard line as the Hornets are inching closer and closer to that end zone. Third and goal, the clock continues to tick as Westwood, he will have a wide open Dale McBride in the end zone for the touchdown, and the Hornets now lead it 38-17. That's a lot of points despite turning the ball over twice. Westwood has two fumbles today, but he also has two touchdowns. And Westlake's offense is clicking despite a pretty poor first half from the defense. Let's now move on to the second half. Let's see if Westlake can hold on to this lead and get their third win of the season. Bearcats have the football to start the second half as on second and four. Wyatt is going to take a shot for the heavens. Bad coverage by Westlake. Harris was not able to get to the receiver quick enough. That's a big play. Now Cincinnati has it at the one. This has been a very long drive. They've taken a lot of clock off, and they have just out-toughened this Westlake team as Carl Reese scores the touchdown, and Cincinnati's only down by 14. They are not out of this game. If their defense can just play a little bit better, they'll get right back in it. Third and nine, Westwood going to look for Dale McBride, and he only gets eight. So now it's fourth and one, an interesting decision for Westlake, and they're going to go for it. In Cincinnati territory, up by 14. This is a strange call, but it is successful as J.C. Godwin, the fullback, gets the conversion. Another third down. This time it's third and four for the Hornets. Westwood is joined by Irving Porter in the backfield as it's going to be a short pass for Tegan Moon, who is left wide open. Moon with a nice play after the catch. He's tackled it around the 23. I don't know why the Cincinnati defenders just decided to say... Yeah, we don't feel like covering him because Tegan Moon is really good after the catch, so that's a pretty big mistake. First and 10, quick throw over to Cassius Troy, who is tackled at around the one-yard line as the Hornets try to punch it in. First and goal, looks like Westlake will try to pass it as Stephen Westwood is going to be sacked immediately. This is how Westlake got Stephen Westwood injured last week. It was first and goal like the one. The Hornets passed it. Westwood sacked and got hurt. Well, this week, he doesn't get hurt, and on second and goal, he finds his brother Carter for the touchdown. Carter Westwood's second receiving touchdown of the game, Westwood's third passing score of the day, and the Hornets are back up by 21, as it is now 45-24. to Cincinnati needs a big comeback, and it has to start here. As on first down, Sam Wyatt is sacked again by David Harris, his second of the day. Harris has really improved game by game this season. In week one against Utah State, he did not look good. Last week against Michigan State, he looked better. And today, he's had his best game of the year so far. Fourth and two, the Bearcats try to go for it, and they are unsuccessful. Malone is absolutely lit up by the safety Jacques Vallone, who is known for his hit power. And the Hornets have it back. Marsucio Ultron is in the game at quarterback, by the way. Westlake wants to give him some snaps, as Ultron would be sacked by the Bearcats. Third and 19 now. Ultron is joined by John Cummings in the backfield as he is sacked again. I genuinely think Marsucio Ultron has been sacked more this year than Steven Westwood. And obviously Westwood has gotten way more snaps. It's not that Ultron's done bad, but the offensive line just does not like to block for him. It's really weird. So Cincinnati's going to try to keep their comeback a bit alive as Mitchell goes for the interception and Kirk will make him pay for it with a first down. Not a lot of time left. The Bearcats are getting closer 
to the end zone as it is first and 15 after a penalty. Tight end in motion, Sam Wyatt taking his sweet old time for whatever reason as it's going to be a screen for Carl Reese and he gets smothered for a loss of four by Ronald Benson. It's been a slow start to the season for Benson, but that's a very good play right there. Second and 19, tight end is in motion once again. Wyatt going to look to throw it, and he is sacked. Mike Wilson brings down the quarterback. Westlake's pass rush has not been as good today. Both Delvin Hines and Richard Rivers Jr. have been quiet, but it's good to see Mike Wilson with a play. Fourth and 19, Cincinnati has to go for it as the pass is deflected by Tegan Moon, and that's pretty much how this game would end. Not a super exciting second half as Westlake wins it 45-24. to Keith Fleming and Marsusio Walteron both got some snaps the rest of the way, but neither of them did anything too crazy. A good win for Westlake. The offense played very well. Steven and Carter Westwood were both phenomenal. And next week, Westlake plays the number four ranked Cal in their first big test of the season. Hope you all enjoyed the episode. Make sure to like button and subscribe. I'm out. Deuces. Thank you.